Mike Consul here with Dr. Julie Miller, Writing Coaches We Are, and uh, we're back. And the last recording we made, we happened to mention some writing books that, uh, that we liked. It was basically in passing, but we decided why not go ahead and do a segment on a couple good writing books, writing books that we would recommend. So we're each going to give you a couple different writing books. Uh, Julie, welcome back. Thank you. Glad to be here. I'll go ahead and lead off with the uh, book uh, called, titled, The Art and Craft of Feature Writing. Now, this book was written by Bill Blundell, uh, actually William E. Blundell is the way it appears on the cover, former reporter and writing coach for the Wall Street Journal. In, in fact, this book is called The Wall Street Journal Guide. So it's basically their in-house guide to to feature writing. It's an excellent book. And even if you're writing fiction, whatever you're writing, business writing, fiction writing, narrative nonfiction, this book is excellent. Uh, I'll just give you a, a few highlights. In fact, I had Bill Blundell come in a couple different occasions. I hired him and he uh, did a did a session with my reporting staff on a couple different occasions. And he was very, very good. The book really gets into how and where ideas come from. He talks about shaping those ideas, uh, planning and execution uh, before you, you get started with the writing, organization, which is critical. He also talks about handling key story elements and uh, talks about word craft. And he even has a section uh, with notes on self-editing and style. And there's an appendix. You go all the way back to page 225 of this book, and he's got reading for writers, basically what we're doing right now, which is is um, giving uh, you recommendations on uh, authors to read. Now, I will say that he mentions, of course, John McPhee and John Gardner. Uh, he also mentions Graham Greene, the great uh, novelist. Oh, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, and I will say that uh, the thing I really like about this book, the, the quality of the writing, he practices what he preaches. He really emphasizes reporting, getting the reporting done properly and being very scrupulous about who and what you let into your story. Some people will interview people, they'll take quotes, and then they just put them in the story because they talk to the person. He basically takes the approach that if they don't give you anything, they haven't earned a place in your story, so leave them out. He also emphasizes not over-quoting. Uh, and then, of course, he gets into the whole organization and writing of the story. It's really an excellent book for any type of writing that, that you're looking to do. So that's my lead-off batter. Julie, what do you got? Well, Mike, first I will say, I always tell people in my writing classes, if you want to look at good writing, take a look at the Wall Street Journal. Their writing, their stories are riveting. I don't care if it seems like the most boring topic in the world. They, Those writers are able to deliver the goods and do it well and keep the reader engaged. So I'm, I'm pleased you picked him and I know I know of his writing and he's excellent. Mm -hmm. So bravo, bravo. Well, you know, I it's kind of interesting about writing. As you know, it's such a solo, in a way, lonely practice, isn't it, too? It is. Uh, right? It is. And um, I think, though, and sometimes you just really need the encouragement, a pat on the head, or looking at other people's ideas and thoughts. And one of the books is quite old, actually. It's called The Chicken Soup for the Writer's Soul, which was done by uh, Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen so long ago. But they have just great stories in there about, about writing and how you break through obstacles, how you, uh, what, what becomes a defining moment if you happen to be writing a new story, how do you capture that correctly. Um, this is kind of interesting. One chapter is on you can't afford to doubt yourself which I think is really interesting. The fear of rejection is worse than the rejection itself. And they have just living your dream, just different inspirational stories uh, and typical Jack Canfield style, you know, told through other people's voices. There's even a chapter on overcoming obstacles. 
which uh, <laughs> we all do in writing, how to say it. You know, you and I have talked so many times about that writing, the joy, the fun of writing is figuring out how to solve the problem that will meet the reader's needs. How do we sell this story, sell this idea, present a um, an initiative, uh, persuade someone. It's all about figuring out the reader uh, and getting that done. And so this talks about it. There's a cute quote, writing is easy. All you do is sit staring at a blank sheet of paper until little drops of blood form on your forehead. <laughs> yes, classic saying. Oh, yeah, classic. it is. And it's so true. And I uh, remember in my writing, and I'm sure you can speak to it too, that once you get into it, the magic is you get into a flow, which uh, really takes time and everything away as you strive to do your writing. Absolutely. And, and it is like magic. It is. You have to trust in the process. It's an act of faith. I remember one uh, writing coach I worked with, she called it an act of faith. And that really is what writing is. And it will come through for you. If you put in the time and the practice, it will come, come through for you. Book number two, Sin and Syntax, written by Constance Hale. It, uh, the, the subtitle is How to Craft Wickedly Effective Prose. Oh, and I will tell you that when you open the book up, if you just go to the table of contents, you will see chapter headings that will probably turn you off. Things like nouns, pronouns, verbs, adjectives, prepositions, conjunctions. Don't let that turn you off. Uh, it is a beautifully written book. Uh, it The thing I love so much about Sin and Syntax is that the, her writing is so good. It inspires your own writing. And one of the great talents that she's got, and I'm going to get myself in trouble saying this. I just know I am. Uh, there, there are people who say, who, who bridle at the idea that you can tell a man's writing from a woman's writing. Well, to me, it's almost like, if you hear a voice in the hallway, somebody out of sight, you can tell if it's a male or female voice 99% of the time. The thing that Constance Hale does is that she writes with the muscularity of a man some of the time, and then she writes with the with the deafness and the nuance of a woman some of the time. And And I don't mean to be to say that women don't write with muscularity or men don't write with nuance or tenderness, but she will go back and forth by turns uh, depending on the material she's writing about. So she takes all these different component parts of writing, makes them very interesting, writes them beautifully. And it's wow. maybe the most inspiring writing book that, uh, that I've ever read. It's certainly in, in my, my top five for sure. So Sin and Syntax, How to Craft Wickedly Effective Prose by Constance Hale, H-A-L-E, uh, highly recommended. What Julie, a, what are you going to finish with? Yeah, that's great. Well, you know, it's an old standard. Doesn't Strunk and White do it right? Elements of Style, it's been around a zillion years, and it's still really the core foundational book for the basics of good writing. And they cover everything and, and cleverly written. And now the big, I remember when this first came out, the big deal was it's illustrated. It never used to before. And they have uh, pictures, funny pictures to go along with it. But it goes everything through, you know, elementary rules of usage, which again, you know, uh, could sound very, formidable, but of course is not. Elementary principles of composition, just such good guides on um, how to do it. And he do, they do before and after writing. He noticed a large stain in the rug that was right in the center, rewritten. He noticed a large stain right in the center of the rug. So they show, they give examples to help writers uh, improve their craft. Words and expressions com commonly misused, which kind of has a, a kick to it. And he also they also talk an approach to style. And as you've mentioned, Mike, so many times about your voice and finding that voice. So you really do come through uh, true and clear and uh, not copying another style. So anyway, Strunk and Wright, Elements of Style, the illustrated version's kind of a kick. 
I've never seen the illustrated version, but I'm I'm glad they did that. And I will say that I uh, that's the first writing book I ever owned, and it has as as you say, Julie, it, it has stood the test of time. Uh, if no, if you if our listeners aren't familiar with that book, it is a small book. Yes, it is absolutely uh, packed with great information, but it's done very concisely, just like any piece of good writing. Julie will reconvene next month. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Mike.